students today we will understand chapter 11 cell structure and microorganisms module 2 in the previous module we have studied about cell cell size and about cell organelles now in this module we will study about microorganisms their occurrence nature and growth and some useful microorganisms students we have learned that there are countless living organisms on the earth of these the organisms which cannot be seen with our eyes but can only be observed under a microscope are called microorganisms i repeat the organisms which cannot be seen with our eyes but can only be observed under a microscope are called microorganisms now let us see the occurrence of microorganisms students microorganisms are present all around us in the air water soil food sewage garbage as well as in the bodies of plants and animals including humans i repeat microorganisms are present all around us in the air water soil food sewage garbage as well as in the bodies of plants and animals including humans some microorganisms are solitary that is they live singly example amoeba paramecium whereas some live in colonies as you can see here children students some microorganisms live on the remains of dead plants and animals students we cannot see objects smaller than 100 micrometers in size with our eyes so we make glass slides of the microorganisms and observe them under a compound microscope here are some size of some microbes paramecium about 100 micrometers bacteria of typhoid 1 to 3 micrometer and polio virus it is about 28 nanometer students microbes measure less than 100 micrometers even in this minute organisms their organelles carry out all life process within the single cell now next let us understand about the nature of microorganisms students some microorganisms like the fungus that grows on bread or strands of algae in ponds are multicellular i repeat some microorganisms like fungus that grows on bread or strands of algae in ponds are multicellular most microorganisms 
such as bacteria and viruses are unicellular. They do not have the membrane bound organelles found in eukaryotic cell. I repeat, most microorganisms such as bacteria and viruses are unicellular. They do not have the membrane bound organelles found in eukaryotic cells. Students, the plasma membrane, cytoplasm and nucleoid are their only components. Such cells are called prokaryotic cells. Let us differentiate between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Most prokaryotes are unicellular and most eukaryotes are multicellular. The nucleus is poorly defined due to the absence of nuclear membrane. Here in eukaryotes, the nucleus is well defined and is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. In prokaryotes, nucleolus is absent. In eukaryotes, nucleolus is present. Here, cell organelles such as plastids, mitochondria, Golgi bodies, etc. are absent. And in eukaryotes, cell organelles such as plastids, mitochondria, Golgi bodies, etc. are present. Bacteria and blue-green algae are prokaryotic cells. Fungi, plant and animal cells are eukaryotic cells. Students, National Center for Cell Science, that is NCCS in Pune, is an institute involved in research in the field of cell science that is cytology, biotechnology, etc. Now next, let us see the growth of microorganisms. Students, each microorganism needs a specific environment for growth and reproduction. I repeat, each microorganism needs a specific environment for growth and reproduction. Many microbes need oxygen for their growth whereas some microbes can grow without oxygen. I repeat, many microbes need oxygen for their growth whereas some microbes can grow without oxygen. Some microorganisms survive even in extreme and adverse conditions like ocean floor, ice in polar regions, hot water springs, etc. During adverse conditions, microorganisms form a thick covering around themselves and stop their life processes. On return of favorable conditions, they come out of the protective covering and continue their life processes. Students, let us understand where do the microorganisms grow? See the medium, soil, water, decaying matter, etc. And the temperature required is 25 degree to 37 degree. Nutrition, specific nutrients, example algae, chlorophyll, oxygen, and atmosphere, moist, humid, and warm. Students, according to shape and life processes, microorganisms are classified as algae, 
फंगाय प्रोटोजोआ बैक्टेरिया एंड वायरस रिपीट अकॉर्डिंग टू शेप एंड लाइफ प्रोसेसेस माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर क्लासिफाइड एज अलगे फंगाई प्रोटोजोआ बैक्टीरिया एंड वायरस नाउ नेक्स्ट लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट यूजफुल माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स स्टूडेंट्स द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स दैट हेल्प इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ सेवरल फूड आइटम्स मेडिसिन्स manufacturing and research there are a few useful bacteria present in our body that aid in the digestion process these are useful microorganisms let us do one activity children take two earthen pots half filled with soil and mark them as a and b make some waste materials like garden waste dung fruit pill vegetable straw paper scrap etc with the soil in pot a as shown here now mix things like pieces of glass scrap metal plastic bags etc with the soil in pot b as you can see here children keep both pots at the same spot in the garden and observe them after 3 to 4 weeks students did the garbage in pot b remain unchanged yes the garbage in pot b remain unchanged because the garbage is not easily decomposed by microbes present in the soil and where did the garbage in pot a disappear it get decomposed by the microbes present in the soil students microbes present in soil dung etc decompose the garbage to obtain material as a result garbage is soon converted into manure of the best quality and our surroundings are kept clean i repeat garbage is soon converted into manure of the best quality and our surroundings are kept clean as in the case of garbage for proper sewage disposal too microbes are released into the sewage so as to help in the quick decomposition of the organic compounds in it students why should dry and wet waste be collected separately usually it's to avoid contamination of the dry waste by the wet waste if the dry waste get wet some recyclers will reject because it will then cost too much to recycle if the dry waste is organic and to be used as fuel then wetness lowers the calorific value let us see points to remember students the organisms which cannot be seen with our eyes but can only be observed under a microscope are called microorganisms Each microorganism needs a specific environment for growth and reproduction. 
Microbes present in soil, dung, etc., decompose the garbage to obtain food material. Microbes measures less than 100 micrometers. There is a short homework for you. What are microorganisms? Write the size of some microbes like paramoecium, typhoid and polio virus. Draw a neat and label diagram of prokaryotic cell and where do microorganisms grow? Thank you.